Right, so I zoomed it, zoomed it enough, I think, because well, it took some time because of my laptop's uh, configuration on the keyboard is different from others. It would be easier if I had the standard configuration. All right, so today's topic: inferential statistics using a chi-square test. Chi-square test. Inferential statistics using chi-square test. So I, I forgot to put this colon. Chi squared test, squared test. Copy that. Is it? Is everyone able to see the the line, the row? What's written here? What's typed here? I see you're not able to. So I'm gonna zoom it one more time in. It's probably the. Let me uh, let me finish this first. Oh, there's still room for zooming in so it allows me to do that i'm zooming it to the maximum visible now everyone visible perfect okay guys look while you're typing i'll explain you the context and what we're going to do today so far we've been we've been talking about this gender gap in the sample but we have really generalized to the whole population in other words we didn't test we haven't yet tested how statistically significant this association between gender and the pay gap is. In other words, how strongly, how significantly the pay is associated with gender. We saw that mean and median, so pay for men and women were, were not significant, but was you know, largely different. Each gender group had different wage rates. The average wage for male was about 12 pounds and for female it was about 9 pounds per hour. Now the question is, how significant is this association? Is this a statistical association? Should we be looking at statistical significance of this association? And the title just tells you what it is. The chi squared test that we're looking at. Learn chi squared test. How to conduct chi squared test. We will not go into details of how to calculate chi squared test statistic, but then we'll show you how to interpret it today. Now, before we start off, we need to, we will be creating a, a number of tables which will tabulate the data, wage data, in, uh, in different ways, and we we'll learn how to do this, and, and uh, we we'll learn how to comment on them. But. The first step would involve then recording a variable, a continuous variable, into a dichotomous variable or a categorical variable. Remember what the continuous variable was? Or if you don't know how to explain it, the, the concept itself, can you at least give me an example of a continuous variable? Population. What population? <laughs> no, population is not continuous not. variable. Okay, go on. What is it? It's 
<laughs> percentages and stuff. Okay, I'll take it. Like, there's so many numbers. Uh, that yes, you can't put it yes, into one thing. yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, height. Age. Age. Yes, examples of continuous variables of height, age. So, as as she said, between two whole numbers, there will be infinitely many different points. Yeah. So you might be aged 18 years old, but in fact you are 18 years old, some months old, some weeks old, some days, and some hours, some seconds. So the the the, the values that continuous variable takes is infinitely many, limitless. That's why we call them continuous. But when it comes to discrete variables, you have this whole sort of range of values that are discreetly different from each other. Well, well, yeah. We can distinguish between uh, one and two easily, right? Okay, now we will create, what we do now is we will create a dichotomous variable or a categorical variable which classifies person based on their wage rate as a low wage earning person or a high wage earning person. You bored? So we will let's let's create a new variable, record the continuous variable into a dichotomous variable, which allows us to create a, a new variable, a, conti a, a a new categorical variable that takes two values: one, high wage earners; second, or I should say, low not not low wage earners, and then low wage earners. Okay, so. Here is the code. Do you want to copy it, please, quickly? Do you? It's a long one. I will. I will scroll it to the to the right hand side of the screen as we copy. Part of it is missing here, right? I'll I'll reveal them. Just everyone finish the. You can't see what the whole thing. This, this is the maximum, maximum zooming in I could do. Lights off. Is everyone happy with that? Because this is dark now. Is everyone happy? Yes. We can try to do that. Okay. It's just the zooming. I think I reached the maximum. Yeah. Let's see. That middle one is not. Is it visible now? Yeah. Let, let me try and see if the maximum. Last time when I tried it was the maximum, but. I'll see if it is really a maximum. Just copy the copy this. Oh no, there's still. That's helpful. I'm zooming in now. If I zoom out, it will probably be smaller and smaller. If I zoom out, that's the maximum. Is it visible now? That's the maximum I can do. Uh, okay, is everyone there? Is everyone there now? Categorical is the last thing you, you've been typing, right? You typed so far. Yours as well. Okay, I'm gonna reveal the 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 next part now. Here it is. Type the rest now, guys. Typing the comments already. Comments are done. Then I'll I'll move now to left hand side to reveal the rest. Copy the rest, please. Now the second line is the main code line. This needs to be. Now, the remaining part of the code. Done? I hope it's visible. That's it, if you can, if you copy all of it. 
it's a very long one, and I'll explain you what this is basically in a minute. Do we execute it? Uh, yes, if you want to, but I'll explain you what it is in a minute. <coughs> if you don't have that red warning message, that's a success. Red message is basically not a success. You need to have a look at it. Right, so two things were being done here. First, we're creating a new variable, <coughs> generating a new variable called low wage. Gen is short for generate, a variable called low wage, a new variable. Then, if you, s I started the, in the wrong way around. Anyway, we generated a new variable after comma, that was the, a code for generating a new variable. But then we're actually doing this. We're recoding, what's this, this is record, not record, some students, type record without careful looking at basically we code our pay the original variable our pay into a new variable called low wage but then record it this way those who are earning between 744 and 930 to 50 assign them a value zero and call them not low wage earners yeah not low those who are earning between 0 and 743 assign a value 1, numerical value 1, and then call them low wage. Now, you might wonder where I got this uh, 0 and 7 and what this forward slash is. Forward slash here means and, the word and, or the between. And 744 is a threshold for low wage. So the minimum of the or the, the maximum of the low wages is basically, in this case, is 743. Anything above it is a not low wage category. The reason we call it not low wage is because eight pound is not high wage. Yeah? Eight pound really is not a high wage per hour. So it's just not low wage. However, 932 is really a high wage, but since it's just above 744, and anything above 744 is, is not high wage. So we just call it not low wage, if you are wondering why not low wage. For a reason, yes. Yeah. And then where did I get this not low wage category or the, the threshold? It's it's from an, a report by Resolution Foundation in 2012. So they they basically suggested that the low wages are below 744. So anyone earning below 744 back then is was earning basically a low wage or working in a low wage employment. Now if you execute it what you get is a, is a variable called low wage that takes two values, zero and one, and splits the data into two categories, basically. Wage, low wage and not low wage categories. Now, why don't we test if it's really executed properly? It has been done properly, yeah? We, we have, whether we've made an error or not. Yeah, we just want to check that. So, do this, guys. Type the code again. That's the syntax for the next task. Check variable details now. The new variable details. Are they, I mean, we want to check if, if the execution was successful. And, and then take it, just a quick peek at the uh, details of this new variable. Maybe you can switch off later. So Let's execute. Yeah, execute it and then tell me what you see, please. Um, we'll, we'll have this computer now. Um, yes, please. Okay, we'll leave you. Is this your back? Sorry, Sorry. 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 I'll leave it. Thank you. Exactly. What's the current line? Did you execute the first line? The long pause. Okay, let's have a look at that. I have the same problem. So you don't have the data yet.
just reveals you the details of the variable. You see that the, the variable takes two values, 0 and 1, labeled as not low and low, or low and not low wages. Yeah? Next, why don't we tabulate and get inside into this new variable, what it helps us to look, to check. Yeah? Type the next one. Tab, or tabulate, codebook. So let's run stata for you. Stata, type stata. We're running out of time, guys. We're running out of time, so any questions for us to handle that? We see the origin behind this. What's the next one? Yeah, what's the next one? Yeah, look at this now. Interestingly, majority. Oh, we do. We still think that. We're trying to get with something that's not available. So, do you know what you did? Is it your first time? Ah, you just told me in the very, very beginning to get quiet. So, I told you that you have to do it as you know. The best thing for you to do is now to watch the screen and I'm recording it anyway. So, four weeks of videos are available to you. Just watch them before you come to the next class. Well, next class is a midterm test, so you don't have the button. We'll go on afterwards. Don't come without watching your reasons. Because you will get confused again otherwise. This is important for your essay. So we have some new guys here who haven't been here, so you have to bear with us now. What does this table tell you guys? Can anyone comment on it? Yes. So the one good thing about this table, the good news about this, uh, the, the good news that this table reveals is that not many people are low wage in low wage employment. Majority, 70 what? 70 what percent? What's that percentage? Um, 76%. 76 percent are in the not low wage employment contract, basically. Yeah, that's a good thing. But the question we still want to ask is, what fraction of the low wage is being uh, paid to the uh, women? Or the what's the fraction of women? Well, what fraction of this low wage category are women in other words, I should really say, because this, this is not the, the wages that we're looking at, it's just the fraction of people who are getting paid certain wage rates here. Yes. How oh, you just replace gender with uh, the, your variable. In this case, we don't have it yet. It's the next one. The next code is important here. Let me let me run this. So we need to find out what fraction of this low wage category is is women, and what fraction is is a male. Yeah. 
male and female? That was our original question, and we want to answer it by looking at the contingency tables. Type this one now. The, this current table doesn't reveal us anything other than just the uh, frequencies for each category, yeah? Not much informative, but this would be very informative. Now, one thing, quickly. The gender, the variable name gender may be recorded in your data as sex. If that's the case, replace it with sex. If not, just leave it as gender. In yours, yeah, sex, double, yeah, just replace it yeah. with that. So check the variable list. If the sex, <coughs> gender of the person is recorded as double X, as sex, then you have to replace this board with sex. And execute the file, or the, the, the code. Execute the code, please, quickly. Shh, we only got 15 minutes and some, some more to do, guys, quickly. Today's, I don't know why. No one, many people aren't prepared at all, so we're just turning up. Files are deleted, I don't know why. This, what happened? I don't know last week. What, why, why the fuck? Up to now, everyone was, made, you know, was, was doing well. Yours is completely gone, for example. Okay. Um, shh. Shh, 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 shh. This table is a bit more informative. What it tells us is that majority of those who are in the low wage category are women. But it doesn't tell us what fraction, what percentage. And when you create a table, you want to include percentages and fractions. You want to create table with percentages, right? Now, to do that, there's a, there's a line of oh, four lines of codes here that we need to copy. Code after code, basically. Here it is. Percentage frequency two-way contingency table, that's it. There's nothing other than table here. Nothing is hidden, just table is the last word. Yes, one by one. I'll do the first one. I'll explain you first one first, and then go to second and third. And I'll tell you what this row, column, and cell means in a minute once everyone copies it. One by one. You can do execute all of them. Yeah. Table. That's it. The green is just a comment, yeah? Always comment. With the green text, you see comments. Next. Highlight and execute the first one. If you get a red warn uh, warning message, let me know, we'll have a look. Or we'll read it and uh, see if you can solve the problem yourself. Highlight which one? The first one. And then execute the first one. Mine is a red message because I have, I, it's a new data. Ignore my, oh maybe, Maybe you are able to see then. Let me execute it. Uh, I think I didn't rename it, so I'll just change this to... Oh, I know where the problem is. I didn't execute the first few. I think the main one. Okay. Oops. Okay, now Jen is not found. Shh. It is watch the video, okay? Then when you yeah. feel. It's on the side of my uh, PM Plus page. You can see the picture, yes? All three of them, but scroll up to the first one. Now, let's let's ex examine the first table. What does it reveal us? Shh, guys. Let's examine the first table. It tells us, basically, frequencies are the, the, the values on the 
in each cell you have frequencies and then percentages. The first one is usually the frequency corresponding to that cell or the corresponding to that row or column. So in this case, columns show us the gender of, uh, of the participant in the survey and the rows show us the categories of pay they are in. So um, this guy, so the first cell is basically uh, shows us the males, frequency of males who are in not low category or percentage of males who are in the not low category. Now, how do we calculate the percentages? As the code suggests, it's a row-based percentage, so the percentages are calculated relative to the row totals. So if you divide 3,986 by 7,841, you get 50.84%. Now, what's the e intuition or economic significance of this thing? Well, it tells us that about 51% of not low-wage earners are male. And remaining are female. And then big, a big significant revelation here is this one. Here, look at the next one. About 65.20% of low-wage earners are female. The majority of low-wage earners are female. That tells you that the wage pay rates are associated with gender. Pay rates are associated with gender. Make sense, guys? Yeah. Because 65.20% of those who earn low wages are female in this sample. Yeah, according to this data. According to this data. Guys, uh, if you want to talk, we can leave and do we have the class. Uh, I don't want the other two guys at the back being you know, confused. They can't hear me. All right, so any questions on this? 65% of the low wage earners are females while only a fraction of 34%, 35% are males. So, one way in, of interpretation of that. Second, execute the second line that's based on column. My file is brand new, so I downloaded it recently. I, I used to code it as, as gender. I think I coded it as gender, but in some of you guys, uh, in some of the data, you may have female instead of gender or sex. Yeah? It looks like our files are being deleted. I lost my file either, as well. I was asking you what, where your data is. My, mine is lost, so I had to download my own. Um, so there must have been a server update that majority of us lost it. Okay, now, this table has the same two-way structure. Male, or gender on the columns, and, and then wage categories are on the rows. And notice that the, the percentages are now relative to the column totals. Interesting thing is that 82% of the males are in the not low wage category. <coughs> so they earn not low wage. But only 70% are in the of the females are in that category. Only 70. So huge difference between the earning uh, potential here again, yeah? The gender is being basically associated with the pay here. So the pay differentials are based on gender. Looks like gender sort of um, low pays are associated with women, high wages are associated with men. If I, if I get it right here, right? If I'm getting it right, given the percentages. Now, let's look at the third way of tabulating it as a contingency table, the information that we have. A third way of uh, Oh, again, the gender is not, in, it was in my original file, this is a new one, so I'll have to replace it. Um, notice that you can replace this variable with your own source of gender pay. For example, you may choose ethnicity, gen then replace gender or sex with that ethnic variable, ethnicity variable, and test your own, just for fun. I mean, for experimentation, of course. <laughs> Yeah, you can do that. The reason for I'm asking you for to save this is for your group work, to, you know, to facilitate that process of experimentation. Replace sex with or gender with the uh, ethnicity or whatever group grouping variable you should have chosen. Now, quickly, can anyone comment, please? Anyone comment on this, please? This next table, based on cell totals. Not step. This is th in here. The percentages are relative to the grand total the 100% in the grand total area cell, 
you see, 10,292, that's where the grand total is. And all percentages are related to that value. So if you divide 3,982 by 10,292, you should get 38.73%. Now, does anyone want to comment on it, on this result? Don't look at me, look at your screen. <laughs> your results are on the screen. You see, uh, Tom Kemeny emailed you with an instruction that he wants you to analyze the results. What does it mean? It means the result is the table. Analyze, analyzing is basically your comments on the table. So here is the result. Now comment on it, please. Oh yes, it's a percentage, yeah. All of these that have dots are percentages, basically. All of these with the commas are frequencies. The larger number. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's totally irrelevant. Okay, let's do this. Then. If you don't have any comments, guys, look, it's a slightly different one than the other one. The other ones were easy, really, the column, columns or so, so, so. Guys, everyone, please take a look. If I, one way of doing it is that if I pick randomly someone <coughs> from 10,292 people, the pool of these people, the probability that the, the one I pick is a male and also not low wage earner is 38%. And if I pick again someone from the pool of 10,292 people, the probability that that person is a female and earns a low wage is 15.53. Now look at this now, next one. If I replace that person back, put that person back, and then pick the next person randomly, the probability that that person is male and earns a low wage is 8.29%. So probability of a female person earning a low wage is higher than the male con counterpart. So again, this evidence suggests that there is a gender and pay association. In other words, my gender is, well, my pay as, is associated with my gender. Or one way of telling it is, high wages are associated with male, low wages are associated with females here. Now, this is easy to say, but how significant of, how significant is this evidence? That's the question we've been talking about, yeah? Can we generalize it to the whole population? This result is based on a sample of 10,292 people, but can we generalize this association to the whole sample, or oh sorry, whole population, that, and then claim that all women wage, all women's wages are associated with their gender, or due to a gender kind of thing. Yeah? Association is not necessarily a causation, but at least we have some sort of link there, association, yeah? not, not necessarily relationships. Okay. For that one, we, we have to type the next line of codes. Ne next lines of codes, actually, quite a few here. Uh, these are comments, basically, mostly. So copy them. And I'll, I'll um, maybe we don't need this gap here. Yeah, that, that makes it easy, but you know, I removed the gap to, to make it visible to everyone. We are now creating this hypothesis statement. We developed this hypothesis statement to test if the association is significant. If the association between gender and pay is significant. Does that have to do with page A? Page zero. No, the next one, page one. Page one, yes. So page none and page alternative is page one. Page A is, is page <coughs> one. Now hypothesis is page none. Alternative hypothesis here is H1. Hypothesis test, high square test of association between variables. Between two variables. Gender and uh, pay. Low pay. Between gender and low pay. Up you. Low pay. Or low wage. Um, usually, we, we, it's actually a low-wage job that the, the part is missing here. 
you could do a low wage job and low wage job for both of them. So the first statement, not hypothesis is if true, is that there is no association between gender and low wage job. In other words, we are not systematically seeing women in low wage jobs. But then alternatively, they, they are associated basically, yeah? There is an association. Now, significance of statements of this, or uh, the yeah, statistical significance of the statements are determined by looking at the probability of this results that we've just obtained, probability of this results that we obtained, being due to a chance. Let me, let me explain it differently now. Um, just execute the code first. I'll, I'll explain it. Just execute the code first. Whether it's a row or column, doesn't matter. You will get the same probability value. Just execute the last line. Last line. This is the last thing we do here now. And you are good to go. Uh, again, my gender is not found, so I'll replace it with uh, the original file. Now, guys, this, this table is, is the same as before. It didn't change. The, the, the new, new part to this table is the bottom line, this line here, the, the row. Pearson's chi-square test statistic 192, and the probability of obtaining that chi-square is 0 0.00001. This 0, 1, this thing. It's just statistics doesn't print out whole number. It's, it only gives us three digits after decimal, you see? So the PR value is not really zero. It, it has some value after that zero. I think this one, there is a value one equal to one, something like that. Uh, now, does anyone want to comment on it? This is the result, so analyze it please, if you want to. 10 seconds. Any comments? Sorry? Anyone? All right, so here it is. The PR here, PR probability, tells us whether the shows us the probability of this result, the result that you're seeing in the table, is solely due to a chance. It turns out that probability is quite zero. In other words, probability that this table result that we just interpreted earlier being obtained just so due to its chance alone is zero. In other words, this is significant. So this is not a chance result. We have the association that we found in this data between wage and gender is not by chance. It's something significant. In other words, the association between or relationship between wage and gender is statistically significant, not due to a chance, which implies we are rejecting the null hypothesis. <coughs> Remember the null hypothesis which says there is no association, we just reject it. Once you reject the null hypothesis, we usually go with the alternative hypothesis. There are two options basically. Either you go with the null hypothesis and conclude that no association between the wages and the gender, or there is association between them. Since we're rejecting that the null hypothesis is not true, then what well, we're rejecting that null hypothesis completely. That implies we go with the alternative hypothesis and then conclude that the association between wage and gender is significant. Okay. It is clear, guys, at all. So look at this. The PR value, the value of P statistic is important. P value is important. If this is less than 1%, in other words, less than 0 0.01, you usually reject the null hypothesis at 1% level. Here, we're rejecting it even in a small percentage point. In other words, there is a very little room for making an error here. So the, 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 the results being obtained by chance is basically has a, prob has a probability almost zero. So we are almost sure or certain that the results are significant or make sense in real world. In other words, we can generalize this sample results to the whole population now. Until now, we've been talking about sample-based results, 
but we know sample, gender gap is there, and the, but now this result confirms that we can, with some sort of confidence, generalize it to the whole population. And in this case, confidence is basically 99%, no, 99.999%. Yeah, that's our confidence level, because of p-value being equal to 0 0.0001. Okay, if this is clear to you, and you don't have any question, you're good to go. And please save everything so that next week we don't waste our half an hour <laughs> helping each other getting started. Yeah, we started half past, I think. Um, they should be. take a look. Just type religion into the variable box. They didn't then. then that, that. Maybe it's coded differently, but still look for it. Scan your barcode, uh, uh, the student passport you need before you leave. Let's see the attendance.